What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video we're working on the 2001 Lexus GS300. Although this will apply to any Lexus GS, whether it's the 300, 400, or 430. Uh, and they, the GS series ran from 97 to 2005. So this will apply to all these and other Lexus models as well. But basically what we're doing today is we're replacing the head unit in it with an aftermarket head unit and then also the door speakers. This is going to be all in one video and it's gonna go over how to do it all right step by step. So let's get started. Now the first thing you wanna do is get in and figure out if you have a factory amplifier or not. So in my case I do. This head unit does not amplify any sound. It just takes it, whether it's the radio, the tape, the CD player, or whatever, and then sends it to the amplifier, which is actually behind the glove box, and then it goes to the speakers and the factory sub if you still have it. You can't put an aftermarket head unit in here and wire the output of the speakers to the factory amp because then it's double amplified and you can't have sound be double amplified, otherwise it's gonna be extremely distorted. So you have to either use the RCA preamp outputs on your aftermarket head unit, which are these right here, or what you do is you bypass the factory amp. And that's what I'm gonna do in my case, because I want this head unit to power all the speakers with its own amp, not through the factory amp. So we're going to remove the factory amp. Well, you can remove it or just unplug it, whatever. Uh, but I'm going to show you how to bypass it. But I'm also going to show you how to not bypass it if you want to use the um, RCA preamp outputs on this aftermarket head unit. It will require a slightly different procedure, which I won't go over because I'm not doing it, but I'll at least show you how to go about doing it if you want to. And then after I install the head unit, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to replace the door speakers. First thing we want to do is uh, remove the glove box and remove this panel right here. You do need a faceplate for this. I have a, a faceplate that adapts this whole thing right here to a single DIN head unit. And they do also make options for a double DIN, but uh, I have a single DIN and then the extra space right here that's gonna be created is just gonna be a uh, little plastic pocket, which I like because you can slip your phone in there, your wallet, whatever you have, and it just gives you a little more storage and but you will need one of those faceplate adapters. It's super cheap. I think it was $11 for me on Amazon. And also all the parts and tools that you're gonna see in this video are gonna be linked down in the description. So go ahead and check those out if you're interested. Okay, so we're gonna start by removing this vent right here. Uh, you shouldn't really use a pry bar, but that's all I got. So that's what I'm using. It just can damage the vinyl right here on the side. There you go, it's got one clip on each side. And then you can either flip it up like this or unplug it. I'll just flip it up like that. And that exposes two 10 millimeter bolts right there. And that exposes two other 10 millimeter bolts right there. We'll take those out as well. You can put this back in park now and turn this off. Now gently pull out and it should wiggle out of place. You gotta lean it forward from the top. Now on the back here, uh, there are several connectors. Two up top for the climate control. Just press on the tab and pull it out. And then two for the head unit. And then the two, and then the two antennas. It's more difficult. Go. and that's free all right so before i move any further i'm going to grab this dash kit this is what it looks like it basically replaces that stock head unit and then like i said it gives you a little storage pocket here and the singled in opening for the head unit and these yep there you go some bracketry and now we're gonna have to remove the old stock head unit from this bracket so all you need is either an eight millimeter or a uh, Phillips head. I'm gonna go for the Phillips head and just remove all four bolts on each side. Once you've undone all of them, I flip this whole thing upside down. And if you spread apart, do that. And if you spread apart the sides, the head unit should pop out of here. It just has little hooks on both sides. Come on, get out, out, there we go. Now do whatever you want with this. 
And after you've undone that, we actually need to take out the climate control as well. Um, but you have to take the head unit out because the climate control has these big pins right here which won't come out unless you can pry these two sides apart. So it has two screws. Take both of those out. And now you're left with the climate control and the adapter kit that I bought comes with brackets that actually replace these metal ones um, and they hook onto this. So now let's put that together. These brackets are stamped with an R and an L left and right. So you take this, you match up the left one that should slide in right here with the two little pins and then you reuse your factory screws that came out and you do that for both sides and you should end up with something that looks like that. All right, there you have it. Brackets are installed on the sides and now it's time to slide that thing in and it has clips right here and they should clip right in. If you just slide it in and line it up, and give it a slight push, as you can see on the sides right here, it should click into place. Maybe. All right, so the clips didn't quite line up as you probably saw in the previous clip, but oh, and uh, these have to go in here, so yeah, I screwed that up. These pins have to actually slide in there. Okay, so if you loosen up these screws a little bit, that gives the bracket enough room to move around and uh, align those clips. There you go. Perfect. So that's what it's going to look like now. Uh, now this does come with two little holes back there for aerodynamics. And if you want to cover them, you could just duct tape either on the back or the front or whatever you want to do. Carpet it. I don't know. I'm probably just going to put a piece of duct tape on the back and uh, cover it up. So as I mentioned before, we have to get behind the glove box. So to remove the glove box, you have three screws up there, one on each corner, and then one in the middle, and then down on the bottom, and then down on the bottom, there are two 10 millimeter screws that I'll show you in a second. Okay, latch this back up, and let's go down there. All right, so down here, there's a panel that you pull down on, and it unclips. You slide it towards you, and then you got a light that you have to unplug here. Um, my, I have an LED bulb in there, so the light doesn't, the bulb doesn't come out. It just pulls the socket out of the bulb instead, so that's great. This is just a miscellaneous wire, and then, like I said, two 10 millimeter bolts. One here, one here. Take those out. Before you take them out, actually, I forgot about this. In here, you'll have an airbag connector, and you want to pop this little plate down either unclip it from here or push the plate up and through so it's not attached to the glove box anymore. Now just unlatch it and it's gonna fall right out. Well, almost. It's got some clips up here, but they're, just, they're weak, so don't rely on them. And the, uh, light unplug it out it comes all right and once that's out this is going to be your factory amp right here and if you push these out of the way these are the two connections that we are after and you're gonna have to do some harness modifications here and i'm actually just gonna completely remove this amp unit but so I'll unplug everything and if you've dealt with toyota radios before you'll recognize these these are the regular classic Toyota factory head unit plugs right here and that's the adapter harness that you want and here are the rest of the plugs so I'll just unplug all of that and I'm actually gonna just temporarily unplug the rest of the harness to give me some room to work with so on this harness is the factory amp there's also the switch to that lights up the glove box and this footwell lighting right here just gonna get rid of that as well all right and now if you start unclipping you can gently pull out this harness um, i'm actually gonna take the cd player out as well because i don't need that and it's obviously not going to work with the aftermarket head unit anyway to do that you have uh, three 10 millimeters two on the right side one on the left side 
and then this just pulls right out. It's got a big connector right here on the back. Unplug that, and that frees up your harness. All right, so now to keep unplugging, just to give me more slack with the harness, it's plugged into whatever that is, and whatever that is, and then three big plugs right here, whatever, whatever those are. I'm sure it's absolutely great to unplug things with the battery connected. So I'm gonna do the right thing and keep unplugging things with the battery connected. And at this point, we're gonna start tearing apart this harness because what we need to do is get these wires to reach up into the uh, dash area right there. So it helps if you have a knife of some sort and to just be very gentle. Obviously you don't wanna cut the wires, but you wanna peel back this factory tape. You have to remove it because you have to get the wires to reach all the way into the glove box or into the dash where the head unit lives. There we go. So it looks like we have us a harness right here that we can now reroute. All of these plugs are redistributed in there. So that can stay plugged in. And that gives us enough room to bring this harness, which I'm gonna tape it all back up to look nice. I'm gonna bring that in there. And then all of these wires, I'm gonna tape back up and put them up in here. All right, so a while has gone by since the last clip and here's what I did. I, I'd like to start this off with, if you're afraid of wiring, you may wanna either do some more research or have someone install this because there will be wiring involved. Obviously, you're gonna have to connect the uh, head unit wiring harness to the adapter wiring harness, but that's easy. You just match colors and either crimp them together, solder them together, whatever you wanna do, but I'll go over that in a little bit. What I'm talking about is all this wiring right here. I cut the wiring uh, harness tape, so the, uh, the everything that was holding it together, I just completely separated that so that I could run uh, these two connectors, the connectors that were plugged in over here on the amp, I had to unplug them and unplug all the harness and cut it so that I could route them through here where the rest of the harness was going into the dash part right here. These two are for the heater controls. So I'm just gonna tuck these away to create less confusion here because we don't, we don't need to touch those at all. That's why they're still taped together. That's its own thing. So this is what plugged into the original head unit on the car. And then these two were actually over there on the amp. So I had to, like I said, unplug them, remove all the tape so I can bring them, swing them all the way over here. This is actually connected up right now just for test fitting purposes. Like I said, you're gonna have to connect the head unit wiring harness to the adapter harness that I will link down in the description. Again, everything is gonna be linked down in the description tools parts, whatever you see in this video, including the head unit. So what I did for these is I just soldered them together, used some heat shrink and then taped over it just to make it all nice and clean. I might've taped a little too much because now it's a little hard to bend, but that's all right, I can work with that. And then I have it plugged in here just to test it. Now, the one thing you'll notice is when you plug it in, if you don't give it accessory power, it won't light up. So right now what's happening is the plugs that went from the factory amp to the speakers. So these are the plugs that went from the factory head unit to the factory amp. And then these are the ones that went from the uh, factory amp to the speakers. Now these have all the speaker wires necessary and they also have constant 12 volts. But if you've already done your wiring here, you'll notice that from this harness, you're missing two connectors. And that is accessory 12 volts and illumination or uh, the lighting, you know how when you turn on your headlights, the uh, lights are supposed to uh, light up. Well, on this one, they're supposed to dim. And the way it does that is through the illumination wire, which is actually on this harness, as well as the accessory power. So accessory power is when you turn your key on, the radio is supposed to turn on. Well, it doesn't because it's telling this to turn on, not this. So what I ended up having to do is crudely depin this wire right here. So if you're looking at the connector with the clip on the bottom, you have the top right wire. That is the accessory power. And you can test that with a multimeter. If you have it, you just stick it in down here. I believe that's the ground. No, that's the ground. Um, this one right here is ground, black and white. With the key off, you should get no voltage from this top right connector right here. And with the key on, you should get power. That's how you know that's accessory. So I took a knife and cut around it. There is a way to deep in it. You can lift up on this uh, tab right here and then you stick a little thingy in there and pry and push and whatever, but I really don't 
think I'm ever gonna use this connector again and worst case I'll just grab one from the junkyard but and then here if you follow the red wire which is accessory 12 volts the yellow wire is uh, constant 12 volts which it already had um, you have this gray wire right here so you're gonna have to deep in the gray wire just solid gray and uh, you just stick it into the hole right there because it's gonna be just an empty hole until it clicks once it clicks that's in it's in there and then you have this connector which is for the rear speakers so once you get those done what I'm gonna do right now this is a lot of talking but I think it's necessary I just wanted to explain everything what I'm gonna do right now is take all these ends and tape them up again so they can look like this uh, I don't want any loose wires hanging all over the place looks like a rat's nest of wiring here and I'm probably also gonna get rid of these miscellaneous wires that the previous owner installed for whatever reason I'm gonna tape this all up and um, then I'll be back with an update oh yeah and this connector right here this is where you plug in your head unit into the control module whatever whatever this is so this is where it gets power accessory um, everything uh, actually I don't know if it gets accessory from here but this is where it gets power this is where the speakers go directly so the the amp factory amp was routed from here whoop, to right here so now we routed it from here to right there all right so I'm gonna tape everything up and I'll be back all right so here we are I taped everything no more rat's nest of wiring the only thing I still have to do is right in here there's still exposed wire left and it, that's exactly where it goes through this little area of metal and originally it had some of these shields on there they're just thick insulation and I'm gonna attempt to put that back on uh, but for now I wanted to start with just taping up all the wires getting them nice and neat and organized as well as over here so I taped up the heater control wires the only thing I did not tape up are the original head unit wires because we still need one wire out of them so like I said before you're gonna need accessory power a hundred percent for sure you'll definitely need that like I said before if you look at it from the front of the connector it's gonna be this top right one right here if you want the head unit to be able to dim itself when you turn on your headlights you're gonna need this teal wire right here so it would be directly diagonally across downward from this top right you're gonna have to get the uh, the bottom if you're looking at it again from the same uh, area it's gonna be this bottom second one from the right I'm gonna attempt to depin it somehow um, you can also just cut the wires and then splice them directly into this harness right here I just prefer to have it pinned into the factory connection that way everything is plugged in in one connector and if I have to disconnect it I don't have to go in and desolder or cut wires or whatever I just unplug it and that's it uh, like I said I doubt I'll ever be returning to the factory head unit especially since mine was somewhat broken so I'm just gonna go ahead and depin this in one way or another and uh, I'll show you once I have it out I'll just click it in there all right well I got the wire free uh, I'm not gonna lie I just completely destroyed this connector you probably can't see this very well I just cut it for weight reduction I'm gonna have to put this on the orange uh, wire right here so this one if you follow it up it has an empty slot right there so you're gonna have to disconnect your wiring harness before you do this just so it can have room to click in there's gonna be two little dimples on the bottom of this connector and you want to line them up with this indentation at the bottom here and then you just slide it in and it should click into place that's it it's locked in all right and once you have your uh, wires accessory and illumination or the dimmer connected go ahead and reconnect your head unit and I'm gonna I'm gonna install this shielding up there but at this point if you didn't take it down it's time to start reconnecting things which I will do before I install the shielding so just so I know where things go uh, that goes there now both of these are useless to me this was the CD player and this went to the factory amp so those I'm just gonna put aside for now I'm gonna tuck them in uh, right before I put the glove box in same with this this went to the factory amp so put that aside and then we just have these three things right here which control lighting uh, in the glove box under the uh, feet right here and so on so all these are gonna be uh, plugged in 
This one I unplugged from this uh, glove box switch right here. Oh, sure, that's great. That's the switch that turns on the glove box light, and then this is the plug that goes into the light itself. Let's start tucking up these wires, and uh, they did have some push clips that they clipped into. I'm gonna either zip tie them or just get those clips back in, and uh, we'll go from there. So at this point, you're gonna wanna put your head unit into your faceplate adapter, and there are a couple ways that you can do this. So the head unit comes with this trim, trim piece right here that goes over and so does the uh, faceplate adapter. When it comes time to actually mounting the head unit to the faceplate, you can do two things. You can either use this plate that comes with the head unit, which slides over and everything clips in, or you can use these two brackets that come with the faceplate adapter, which will bolt in to the side of the head unit. And I'm gonna choose to go this way because when you use this uh, piece, you need those uh, two tabs that slide into the side of the head unit in order to release it. And I am afraid that I'm gonna lose those eventually. And also I just bent the crap out of it. So there goes that. Anyway, in order to simplify things, I'm just gonna use these two brackets, use the factory screws and uh, just bolt everything in. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slide these brackets in first and then I'm gonna insert the head unit. So the way it goes, this left one will have the writing upside down and it should slide into place and look just like that. And it doesn't actually, well, it, it's supposed to clip in, but it won't until it has pressure from the head unit up against it. And then, and then this right one slides in and stays in like that. And now you wanna take the head unit, slide it in from the back and just press it up against the front. There we go. The uh, bolt holes line up. So now we can reuse the factory hardware. And the reason you can't use the factory hardware first um, is because they actually stick out too much and it won't slide in past these two little areas. You won't run into this issue if you use that plate that comes with the head unit, but again, I just prefer this way. I'm only gonna use two of the bolts. That should be plenty to hold this in. All right, so I said I'm gonna use this trim piece that came with the head unit, but it turns out that this does not fit if uh, you choose to use these adapter plates on the side. So to use this, you're gonna have to use that metal bracket. So I'm gonna go with the trim piece that came with the adapter kit, and this snaps right in. It looks decent. It's just that it has a big gap. This would have made a smaller gap, but whatever. Now comes the time to reconnect everything after you've gotten all your wiring situated. Uh, you can ignore that. That's for the uh, old head unit or the original. And there will be two antenna wires. The one you need is going to be the bigger one. There's going to be a big one and a small one. You need the bigger one. So start tucking your wires away. Okay, so next what we're going to do is start connecting wires. I have uh, my sub RCAs that are already ran. And then there's not many wires to connect here. And then we got the main harness, which clicks in right here. Make sure that fuse isn't popped out. That's in. And other than that, just the antenna, which like I said, the big wire or the, the bigger uh, connector. And just connect that in. And there you go. And for me, I have a mic so I can pick up phone calls through the uh, head unit. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect that. This is already ran through the dashboard and uh, that's it. At this point, we can connect the heater uh, controls up top. So we got two connectors, one big one, one smaller one. Click both of those in. There we go. And uh, now let's test fit our new system here. There's gonna be a lot of wiring to tuck behind there. 
Don't worry if you can't see what's happening because I can't either. So This is all going to have to be uh, done by feel. There you go. Alright. This uh, adapter plate has a little pin that it has to line up with up top there. I don't know if you can see it. That's there. One thing I forgot to mention is I did have to shave down the sides of it. It was a little too wide and it looked weird and, well, most importantly, it didn't fit. So I had to uh, shave down the sides. I just used uh, sand, some sandpaper. I used my belt sander because it made a nice uh, flat line, but you can just use regular sandpaper or a little saw if you have to, or whatever you have, just if yours has the same issue, you're gonna have to trim it down and uh, adjust it. That's in, so let's get the uh, four bolts in for it because it still keeps the factory hardware for this. So I was using the wrong bolts. The darker ones go up here and down there. So they, they should all be the same bolts. Two dark ones down below. Make them snug. This should be nicely secured. Now it's time to get the glove box back in here. So uh, slide this airbag connector in and then connect the glove box light. And now what I like to do is line up the top clips and then latch it in. That'll hold it in place for me to install the bottom bolts. Last thing you have to install is this cover right here and it has two hooks they slide into these two holes one here one over there and then you're gonna have to plug this back in all right so now that the head unit is in everything is back together it's time to replace the speaker obviously this is optional but new speakers are always going to make a huge, are always going to make a huge difference. So for me, I went with these Rockford Fosgate six and a half inch speakers. I'm going to link them down in the description. Uh, it was ninety dollars for all four, and you do need speaker adapters because these factory speakers use their own enclosure to produce the sound that they were tuned for. So you do need some speaker adapters, or you can make your own. But I'm going to link these down in the description. They are pricey but they're pretty much the only ones i could find so i think they're worth it it'll save you a lot of time and fabrication so to start off let's get off the door panel you have a screw up there one in here one down here four on the bottom That is the door stop for when you shut the door so it can be uh, not hitting up against the door panel. It hits up against this rubber. So don't forget to take that out. Now all the screws are out and what you need to do is put your hand down on the bottom here. There should be enough room for you to stick one or two fingers in and pry out. And it should just pop out easily. These clips are not very difficult to pop out. And once you're sure that it wiggles free, slide up on the end of the door and then up and out on the front. Now behind we have some electrical connectors so disconnect all of them and then we're going to disconnect the door handle as well. That's for the lock, this is for the window, door lock and the door handle which you can just pull out and then the rod comes out. Same for both. And last but not least, this uh, light down here. Press on the upper tab and pull it out. And that's it, door panel's off. Now this process is gonna be pretty much the same for all four doors with the exception of the tweeter speaker. So I'm only gonna show this door and you can apply this to all four. And I'll get into more details about the tweeter in a minute. So now that we are at this point, uh, what I'm gonna do is unplug the speaker or the, the tweeter 
and then the speaker itself. And then I'm gonna unbolt this module from the door. You don't necessarily have to, but it just makes it a whole lot easier to get to that screw. Just some 10 millimeters. Now you can unbolt the whole speaker assembly. And gently pull it out. Oh, that looks like it's uh, stuck on there. It has a clip on the other side. Do whatever you have to do to get it out. There we go. All right, original speaker is out. And now it's time to install the adapter. And as you can tell, the adapter basically makes it so that you can mount a six and a half inch speaker on this stock bolt pattern. Now for this, you're gonna have to get slightly creative because this right here is indented about half an inch inward and the kit does provide you with a spacer but it does not provide you with the proper bolt that's extra long to go through that spacer because the original speaker had this offset hook right here that you'd use with the regular bolts well now that doesn't fit because it's not long enough so what i did is i grabbed just a random bolt i had laying around Obviously it doesn't match, but it doesn't have to as long as it does the job. Preferably you want something that uh, has coarser thread than this. You want something that matches this because you're screwing it into plastic, but this is all I had and it's gonna have to do the trick. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with these uh, bottom bolts and just start them in so it can stay in place by itself. Then I'll figure out the top. Then we'll move on to the wiring. This is also why it's good to unbolt this module so that you have access to slide this spacer in and do whatever you have to do to bolt that down. If you have one of these screws which came off of the door, that would be ideal because it pretty much matches the same thread as these. It's just extra long, so this would be great. Unfortunately, I don't have an extra, so that's why I went with this. Just match up the spacer. This module is going to be very annoying. Okay, now just snug it up and hopefully this catches enough to do the job. It looks like it's pretty tight, so I'm going to consider that done. Now I'm going to put this module back up because it's very annoying. All right, next let's snug this uh, adapter plate on. You're just screwing into plastic here, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight. As long as it's snug and doesn't rattle, you're good. Let's uh, take care of some wiring now and then we'll install the speaker. Now the reason I say let's take care of some wiring is because aftermarket speakers are, I, I don't want to say never, but rarely plug and play. So this is a factory plug for the factory speaker and these aftermarket speakers, probably 99% of the time, are going to come with spade connectors just like this and you have to put positive and the negative on it and obviously that's not gonna go together. So they give you this harness, which is extremely long, but that's great and that's fine. You get extra wire. You're gonna have to find positive and negative on these wires. And I'm gonna put a screenshot on the screen of the wiring for every door on this car. And it tells you which color wire is positive and which is negative. So this is gonna be for the front doors. This is gonna be for the rear doors. And then for the tweeters, it doesn't say, but I'll show you how you can find out with a uh, simple trick. You just need a nine volt battery and that'll tell you positive and negative. What you wanna do now is either, I'm sure they make adapter harnesses that adapt into this, but I'm never gonna be going back to stock speakers. So I'm just gonna cut this plug off and then connect these connectors into the wires. Just cut that off, don't be afraid. Take the tape off and then obviously you need wire strippers. I'm gonna strip back the uh, insulation and now we're gonna get our speaker wire that came with the speaker. And on this speaker, the wider connector is positive and the narrower one is the negative. Actually, what I wanna do is run them through my adapter plate right here. There's a hole on the bottom. There's actually a hole every like inch and a half or two um, because it has these spacers for this extra plate and you can run the wire through. That makes it look a little cleaner and also it helps it not be pinched between the speaker and the plate because this is going to mount just like that and you don't want to pinch the wire there. So this is going to help it um, have some, some play in it, some give if needed. 
and also it's going to help it not be pinched. So uh, connect these up, positive to positive, negative to negative, and they make it really easy for you. You can't mix them up on this because they literally won't fit reverse. So now we're going to mount the speaker in uh, just so it's out of my way, not dangling or anything. And it does come with mounting screws, the speaker itself. So just get your four mounting screws that it comes with. And uh, this adapter plate actually has pre-drilled holes. It has three sets of holes that you can pick from. And uh, whatever fits your speaker, then just use those holes and screw it in all the way. The plastic is pretty hard, but at the same time, it's soft enough to where the screw has no trouble making its own threads in there. So that's great. All right, so I'll just make these tight. Be careful though, you don't want to strip the threads that you just made. I mean, you are screwing into plastic, so it doesn't have to be crazy tight, just as long as it's bottomed out and it doesn't rattle, it doesn't move around or anything, you're good. It should have one uh, screw hole in every corner. That way you can go crisscross and mount it properly. So now, as you can see, this wire can move. It's not under tension and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And we have to connect it to these wires right here. Again, I'm going to put on the screen the uh, pictures of what is positive and what's negative for this application. And um, you can just follow those for all the other doors. And if not, you can look up your own diagram or chart online. All right, so when it comes to wiring this in, I'm going to measure out an approximate length and I'm going to give myself extra, of course. Snip it right there. I forgot to mention this before putting the speaker in, but the positive on these speakers, the wire will have a white line on it and the negative will just be a solid black wire. So positive uh, black and white stripe, negative solid black. So for this door, every door is going to have different color wires. For this door, the uh, positive is going to be the light green and the negative is going to be the blue. So we're going to go strip the end of these wires, twist it together. You could use uh, crimp connectors, you can use, you can solder them together. You can use those uh, spade connectors, butt connectors, whatever you want. I'm just gonna twist it and tape it. I will still run the stock tweeter. These are three-way speakers and they have their own mid-range and, and tweeter speaker, so you don't have to worry about that if you don't have a tweeter. I will still use it just because in my personal opinion, it gives it a little more spacious sound inside the car, if you know what I mean. It's only a tweeter, so it's not gonna affect the system if I add on another speaker. Um, you, you can't add a bunch of speakers because uh, it'll overpower the amp. But basically what I'm going to do is just add this tweeter in line. I'm going to get some wire from my extra harness here and measure out about this much. So up to here, cut that. Now this is going to be my tweeter wire and I'm going to wire it in at the same time on this end. So I'm going to tie these two together, make sure that you have the same colors going on here. So black with white stripe, both go together and solid black wire go together. Obviously this is not the best way to connect wires, but I just want it done. Okay, so light green is positive and that goes to our um, black and white stripe wire and blue is negative. Before I do that though, I'm gonna take some of this heat shrink and it's pretty long, so I'll cut it in half and I'm gonna slip it over these wires. That way after we're done connecting it, we can uh, heat shrink the wires together. We can heat shrink this over the wires to uh, keep them safe. Obviously you can use electrical tape if you want. I'm gonna fold it over this way and then you wanna bring the heat shrink over, twist these together, flip them over and then you can take your lighter, just heat it up and it'll shrink over the wire nicely. All right, so I'm gonna route that this way. You can secure the wire on something if you want. Uh, I'm gonna worry about that later. For now, I'm just gonna route my wires. All right, so if you have a tweeter and you wanna use it, pop this uh, piece off, just slide it backwards, and you're gonna need a nine volt battery. I'll show you on the speaker because it's easier to see, but when you apply positive and negative to this nine volt battery, the speaker will wanna either pop in or out. And if it pops outwards, that's how you know that you have positive on positive and negative on negative. If it pops inwards, then your polarity is reversed, which means you have positive on negative and negative on positive. So um, the bigger terminal here is going to be negative and I'm going to hook it up to the black wire and then I'll have the positive in my hand and tap it. 
as you saw, the speaker goes out if you put positive on positive, negative on negative. I'm gonna try to reverse it on purpose right now. So I'm gonna put positive on negative and I'm gonna tap the negative to the positive and watch the speaker. See how it goes in? That shows you that you have them reversed. So do the same thing for the tweeter. Um, it's gonna be hard for me to show you because it barely moves, but I'm gonna try. It's positive and this one on negative and we'll see what happens. Okay, hopefully you can see that on camera, but it is popping outwards, so I got them right. If I reverse them, it goes inward. So that tells me that black is negative and white is positive. And now with that information, we can continue to connect these wires, black to black because it's negative, and then uh, black and white to the white one, that's positive. What's also great about this uh, heat shrink is when stuff gets hot in the summer, in the door, in the dash, wherever you want to use it, uh, electrical tape a lot of times will just, the glue will melt off and it starts getting all gooey. This actually shrinks with heat, so it likes the heat. If anything, it gets stronger. Obviously, you can catch on fire, so don't melt it too long, but it's, it's a lot stronger than electrical tape when it comes to uh, heat. All right, so there you have it. Now just uh, route these wires however you'd like. All right, now that it's all set, you'd wanna test it. Uh, I probably won't, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the door panel on. So putting the door panel on, it's just a reverse procedure. So connect in your light down at the bottom, connect in your two uh, lock, or your lock rod and your uh, door handle cable, and then all your other electrical connections, and then we'll slide it up on top. And once you're sure that all around the clips are lined up put your screws in all right once you got your bottom four screws in there's a screw that goes into the air vent right here get that one in and then don't forget about this main anchor screw last but not least put on this uh cover plate and that's it once you repeat this process for all four other doors then you should be good to go on the speakers all right now hopefully this video helped you out Hopefully I went over all the necessary steps in order to install an aftermarket head unit in this car. It's one of the most difficult installs I've had to do so far. Most other Toyotas are very easy and do not require nearly as much wiring and reconfiguration. Again, hopefully I went over everything that should help you um, install one of these. I recommend doing this and the speakers at the same time just so that you can get the full experience because if you just use the stock speakers, well, they're not the greatest. So. I would just do this with the speakers at the same time. So again, hopefully this video was helpful and hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.